The lights can be switched on. Hare Krishna. Thank you all for kindly coming in this afternoon. Um, it's always been my honor and privilege to be here at the East Khan of Silicon Valley. So to be at the lotus feet of Srila Prabhupada, Shachinandan Gorhari, and Radha Madan Mohan, I feel very honored and privileged. So thank you all. We have about, uh, I think, a uh, few minutes before start of class. So we'll sing a very nice bhajan by Srila Rupa Goswami. Srila Rupa Goswami has composed this verse, and the fundamental prayer behind this verse is Krishna Deva Bhavantam Vande. O oh Krishna, I bow down to you. Then Krishna says, O oh Rupa, you're bowing down to me. What do you want from me? What's the benediction that I can give you? Rupa Goswami says, Mana manasa madhukaram arpaya nijapada pankaja makarande. Mana manasa means my mind. Madhukaram means a bumblebee. Let my mind become a honeybee or a bumblebee. Arpaya nijapada pankaja makarande. Nijapada means your feet, which is pankaja, like lotus. So therefore, please give me the, please give the honey of my mind the honey of the lotus of your feet. Quite beautiful. Because you find that the honeybee always looks for the honey in the lotus. So Krishna, your feet are lotus. And the service to those feet is the honey. May the honeybee of my mind, which is looking for honey in this world, get the honey of service to the lotus of your feet. Isn't that what we are all looking for? The nectar of Krishna's eternal service. So that is the central theme. Of course, we can read the translation of the verses on our own at a later time. We will, in the interest of time, get started with the song. By singing this song, Rupa Goswami's blessings will touch the singer. This is guaranteed. Just like by chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, Krishna Prem is guaranteed. By chanting this song, even if we are contaminated, even if we are polluted, because it's composed by Rupa Goswami, who is such a great Vaishnav, and we are simply repeating his words, Krishna will shower mercy on us. Srila Rupa Goswami Padaki. Krishna Deva Bhavantam Vande. 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 
Thank you. 
Nitai Gauranga Jaya Nitai Gauranga Jaya Jaya Prabhupada We welcome His Grace Amirendra Prabhu to ISKCON of Silicon Valley at IASV. And he is actually part of the ISV. And apparently, all of you know that he is a disciple of His Holiness Radha Govinda Maharaj, who is an expert scholarly in Srimad Bhagavatam, who knows the Srimad Bhagavatam syllable by syllable. Not just that, he is an expert in the needy and greedy of teachings of the Vedic, teachings of Guru Parampara. And same mood that today Amarendra Prabhu is going to share with us. He's received, he has received the special mercy from his Guru Maharaj and he's kind enough to visit us and share the mercy and the love that he has received from his dear Guru Maharaj. So we welcome his Grace Amirendra Prabhu and his lovely wife Swastika to ISV. And when Amirendra Prabhu speaks, you know what's going to happen, right? Yes. We would have thousands more people in the same room. So I humbly request each of you to move left, right, just squeeze all the space that you have in between. If you have any bags and backpacks and purses, purses goes right towards Radha Madhav Mohan's side and the backpack goes left side. <laughs> <laughs> we need a new temple, right? So purses can go towards the right side. And the left, on your left side, pass on all the backpacks and we'll put it underneath the benches here. So we can accommodate as many devotees as we can. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Om Shilakaya Chokshurun Militam Yena Tasmay Shri Gurave Namaha 
I feel extremely nervous, very nervous sitting here. It's kind of Silicon Valley is like the high seat of learning. It's like the Navadweep, where there's so much scholarship, but there's so much service, but there's so much sadhana, but there's so much sadhu sangha that it's like the dham while being in America. When I come here, I feel nervous because I don't fit here. I don't have the, the devotion, the service attitude, the scriptural learning, the book distribution scores. <laughs> I in no way can in any way try to fit here. So I feel very nervous. I feel like a little mouse in the assembly of lions who are ruling over the jungle of material existence with the roaring of the monthly Sankirtan festival. <laughs> but I'm very confident that all of you will be very kind to me. You will all bless me, pray for me, and protect me with your best wishes. Yes? yes. As Srivas Pandit Prabhu asks, yes or yes? So I beg each one of you, please pray intensely. Even if it's five seconds, ten seconds, please close your eyes and pray intensely. May the right words come at the right time, in the right mood of devotional service. May our discussion cleanse our consciousness, entertain our ears and hearts in Krishna's service, and pull our consciousness closer to the lotus feet of Shishi Radha Madan Mohan. This is our only prayer. Did you all protect me with your prayer? Yes? yes? Doesn't seem to be so convincing. Yes. There was one place where we were doing, it was an outdoor festival program and we were doing Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol Kirtan. I was saying this a couple of days ago. It was in Salem, Massachusetts. It was during Halloween. That's considered to be like the headquarters of Halloween. Everyone in different costumes comes there to Salem, Massachusetts. And we went there too. And we had our dhoti and kurta and tilak. <laughs> and, and they thought that was our Halloween costume. <laughs> and there were 100,000 people. And everyone looked different. 
different costumes. And they had a central stage there. And I was having a mridanga in my hand, so they thought I'm a performer. So they told me to get onto that stage and start playing the mridanga. And I was like, wow, this is a nice opportunity. <laughs> I took up the mridanga and we went, Hari Bol, Hari Bol. And 100,000 people chanting, Hari Bol, Hari Bol. And I got down and I felt, Then I realized what they were actually chanting was not Hari Bol, they were chanting horrible, horrible, hor <laughs> horrible, horrible, horrible. But they were imbued with so much Gaudi of Bengali pronunciation that their horrible sound, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I think you softly said Hari Bol, so I got reminded of the loud Hari Bol there. So, did you all protect me with your prayers? Yes. Thank you. Hari Bol, right? <laughs> In the Bhagavad Gita, our very beloved Sri Krishna, he tells Arjun, Yo maam pashyati sarvatra, sarvam chamai pashyati, tasyaham na pranashyami sachame na pranashyati. That, O oh Arjun, the essence of all advice is develop the vision where you can see me in all directions. Yo maam pashyati sarvatra. Arjun, develop this vision by which you can see me in all directions at all times. And this is the same thing that you see echoed again in Srimad Bhagavatam. Sarva bhuteshu yaha pashyet bhagavan bhava matmanaha bhutani bhagavatyatmani esha bhagavatottama. In the 11th canto, it is described that the greatest Vaishnava is he who can see Krishna at all times, in all living beings, in all directions. He never loses darshan of Krishna. Like our Srila Prabhupada. When Srila Prabhupada came to Chicago, the breeze of Chicago welcomed Srila Prabhupada, the windy city, of course. And it was in the early days when the disciple forgot to bring a jacket for Srila Prabhupada. And Prabhupada was feeling a little cold. And the disciple said, Srila Prabhupada, please forgive me. I forgot to get the jacket. And Srila Prabhupada's immediate response was, this breeze is the cold embrace of Krishna. And when I'm being touched by this breeze, it is like Krishna embracing me. Now you can think, there could have been so many responses to that situation. Why didn't you get the jacket? I told you one thing and you can't even do that. Or, maybe next time you can remember to get the jacket. Or, okay, uh, I'll remember that from next time, I'll bring the jacket myself. Or, just get somebody else's jacket so that I can be covered. There could be so many responses. But the response Srila Prabhupada gave was he immediately saw Krishna in that circumstance. So Bhagavatam says, Sarva bhuteshu yaha pashyet bhagavan bhava matmanaha bhutani bhagavatyatmani esha bhagavatottama. The purest Vaishnava is he or she who can see Krishna in all circumstances. Whenever we write an email, you see CC and BCC. CC means Chaitanya Charitamrit. <laughs> That is the do, what to do. When you write an email, make sure it's in line with the Vaishnava etiquette given in Chaitanya Charitamrita, CC. That's the to do. And what is the not to do? BCC. B means blaming, C means complaining, and C means criticizing. So whenever we write an email, it must be in the Vaishnava culture given by CC, and it must not include BCC. What is the BCC? Blaming, complaining, criticizing. In the olden days, His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj used to get so many letters. And Maharaj had to answer all those letter correspondence to disciples and other god brothers. So there was one devotee who was given this service. Maharaj would record in the dictaphone and his service was to transcribe the letter and print and Maharaj will sign and send. 
the disciple would send it. Now this devotee who was so used to transcribing, he saw that in every narration of the reply to the letter, His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj would say, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Now this devotee said, I learned something new. P-A-M-H-O. A-G-T-S-P. Please accept my humble obeisances as P-A-M-H-O. And all glories to Srila Prabhupada's A-G-T-S-P. He said, I'll, you know, anyway, every letter starts with this. So in the interest of time, I'll just say P-A-M-H-O, A-G-T-S-P. And he printed it to Maharaj so that Maharaj can sign and then it can be sent out. So Maharaj looked at the letter and he said, what is this? <laughs> he thought Maharaj doesn't know what that is. And he's asking, so he said, uh, you know, this... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Maharaj, P-A-M-H-O, A-G-T-S-P is, please accept my humble obeisance. So, Maharaj said, I understand that, but why are you putting this? That's not what I dictated. He said, Maharaj, I thought that's common in all the letters, so it saves time. Maharaj said, no. I want you to write completely, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. So devotee said, okay. Now, because it's in, the, in every letter, he thought, I'll use control C, control V. Copy paste. So in one letter he wrote, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Now when he was typing off the next letter, reply, copy, paste, copy, paste. And that's, you know, saves time. And at the same time, it's not P-A-M-H-O, it's the complete one. As he's doing this, behind his chair, Maharaj is standing. <laughs> looking into what he's doing. Maharaj said, what is this? He said, Maharaj, copy, paste. He said, I don't want you to copy paste. I want you to hand type, please accept my humble obeisances. And then Maharaj said, you know why? Because when I am dictating that on the dictaphone, I close my eyes and I'm thinking of that personality and actually offering my obeisances to his lotus feet. And when you write P-A-M-H-O, or you just copy paste, it loses the essence of what I'm offering. You hand type the whole thing so it successfully reaches the lotus feet of the person whom we are sending. So, when we write an email, we remember principles of Vaishnava culture according to CC. And what are the things that we forget? Blame. BCC. Blaming, complaining, and <laughs> criticizing. What typically we do is we start the letter very well. Please accept my humble obeisance. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. All glories to, like, all of that. And at the end, there'll be your aspiring, humble, menial servant of the servant of the servant, eternally aspiring the dust of your lotus feet. And in the middle, <laughs> between this version of culture and this version of culture, in the content of the email, dishum dishum. <laughs> but a pure Vaishnav is he, who in all directions, at all times, in all circumstances, in every person, can see Krishna. Bhagavad Gita says this, Bhagavatam says this. Does Chaitanya Charitamrit says this? Of course, Chaitanya Charitamrit gives an example even. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is sitting in front of Ramananda Rai. Ramananda Rai is looking at Mahaprabhu. And Mahaprabhu is sitting like a sannyasi with a danda. And suddenly, out of nowhere, Mahaprabhu picks up a flute. Keeping the danda aside, he turns bluish black and sits with a flute in his hand. And Ramananda Rai is looking, that's Krishna. And then very next moment, Mahaprabhu is there as a sannyasi, golden complexion sannyasi. And then when Ramananda Rai is convinced this is a sannyasi, he looks again, and there he sees Krishna. So Ramananda Rai says, Pahila dekhila tumar sannyasi swaroop, ebe tumar dekhi moi shama goparoop. What is this? Oh, Mahaprabhu, before I saw you as a sannyasi, and now I'm seeing you as Krishna. What's going on? Mahaprabhu immediately uses this concept that a Vaishnava can see Krishna in all directions. And he tells, oh, it's not my glory, it's the glory of your love. Pure Vaishnavas, they can see Krishna in all directions. So you're seeing your Krishna in me. What is so surprising? Ramananda Rai said, don't cheat me. Don't cheat me. Mahaprabhu uses this concept in 
in the presence of Ramananda Rai, to teach everyone that pure Vaishnavas, they see Krishna in all directions, at all times. Similarly, when Jagai and Madai are uplifted, Jagai and Madai beg for forgiveness and upliftment. Mahaprabhu says, you just place a tulsi leaf on my palm. And as soon as you place a tulsi leaf on my palm, I will take all your sins. I guarantee it. So Jagai and Madai, they place a tulsi leaf on the palm of Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu. And as soon as the tulsi is placed in the lotus palms of the golden complexioned volcano of love, Sri Shachi Nandan Gaurahari, what happens? He turns completely black. Now we may think he turned black because of the effect of the sins of Jagai and Madai entering his body. But the question is, Mahaprabhu's body is transcendental and sin is temporary and material? How can karmic reaction, sins, touch the body of the transcendental Lord? Not possible. What is the reason why he turned black? He looks at Advaita Acharya, Mahaprabhu, and he says, Oh, Advaita, what do you see? Advaita Acharya would worship a deity of Krishna called Madan Gopal. And that deity was dark complexioned. As soon as Mahaprabhu turned black, and he asked Advaita Acharya, Whom do you see? Advaita Acharya said, I see my mother and Gopal, my dark complexion Lord in front of me. Mahaprabhu said, this is the nature of pure Vaishnavas. They can see Krishna in all directions. Pure Vaishnavas are like this. When Srila Jayapataka Maharaj came to Australia, whose holy Vyaspuja was celebrated yesterday, Srila Jayapataka Maharaj came to Australia in Sydney, there's a place called as Parramatta. I remember when I went there, we were standing at the traffic lights, and I read Parramatta, and I said, interesting name. And the devotee who was driving, he said, you know, Srila Prabhupada, when he came to Australia, in Sydney, he stopped at the same lights here, and he said, Parramatta, interesting name. <laughs> but now here's the difference between a pure Vaishnava, Srila Prabhupada, and a Wretched condition soul like me. I just said that and I stopped. But Srila Prabhupada, now is the genius. Look, the same concept of seeing Krishna in all circumstances. Prabhupada reads, Parameta. P-A-R-A-M-A-T-A. -A -A. Prabhupada takes the A out from Parameta and reads it as Pramatta. And then Prabhupada says, Nunam Pramatta Kurute Vikarma. Now, nobody in the history of Australia <laughs> would have ever related Parameta to Pramatta and a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, Nunam Pramatta Kurutevi Karma. The devotee told me, he said, this was Srila Prabhupada's vision, vision at this traffic light. I said, wow. And then he paused and he said, Srila Jayapataka Maharaj, when he came to Australia in Sydney, he also stopped at the same traffic lights here. <laughs> and he looked and he said, Parameta, interesting name. I said, now, <laughs> what did Srila Jayapataka Maharaj say to that? He said, he read it as P-A-R-A-M-A-T-A -A -A and said, Paramata, <laughs> Srimati Radharani, the greatest mother of the whole creation. He was able to see Srimati Radharani at the traffic lights in Australia. Paramata, the greatest mother. Not just that, Srila Jayapataka Maharaj, when he saw a boy with the t-shirt, Gap, the Gap store, very famous Gap store, right? Look there. Can you stand up and show everyone an example? <laughs> and trust me, this was not pre-planned. <laughs> when Srila Jayapataka Maharaj saw a person with a sweatshirt like this saying Gap, he said, Gap, G-A-P, Govinda Madhi Purusham. <laughs> Talking about the vision to see Krishna in temporary day-to-day -day activities. How wonderful. Vaisheshika Maharaj in one class I myself heard, he gave a beautiful example. How many of us have seen and of course, everyone here, I'm just asking for the sake of asking. How many of us have seen tinted glass windows in a car? Right? What's the speciality of a tinted glass window? 
you while being in the car you can see outside but those outside can't see within right vaisheshika maharaj in one class he gave this example i was hearing it online i was like wow what a perspective he said in a tinted glass window you can be in the car and you can look out but those outside can look within and then maharaj said with this i am getting reminded of the paramatma where sitting inside he can see everyone but nobody can see within the consciousness and see the paramatma sitting how wonderful even the person who invented tinted glass would never think <laughs> that his creation would take us closer to bhagavad gita where those sitting inside can see out like the paramatma but those outside can see the paramatma within the heart my guru maharaj also when he came to america he came to one home and they had kept listerine mouthwash in the bathroom right this 25 years ago now first of all my guru maharaj didn't even know what a mouthwash is because he was using datun you know like the neem stick the listerine bottle was kept actually two bottles were kept and you know listerine again i'm not going to test on the topic is not listerine but <laughs> just as an example listerine comes in multiple colors the two bottles kept in that room one was a yellow listerine and one was a blue listerine the person the house owner had kept listerine for guru maharaj when he came he saw my guru maharaj offering obeisances in that direction and he said maharaj ji sab theek hai is everything okay and guru maharaj said coming so far away from brindavan when i see these two colors it reminds me of the blue complexion krishna and the golden complexion shrimati radha rani it reminds me of the divine couple radha sham sundar similarly when my guru maharaj was moving around in mumbai some disciples said maharaj this is a nursing home because they had to take right from the nursing home you know the traffic lights geographically they had to take a right from the nursing home so the disciples said this is a nursing home and my guru maharaj said oh does that mean it's the house home of nishinga dev <laughs> nursing home home for nursing dev nursing ha <laughs> it's quite fascinating quite fascinating especially when you um hear it like that we, we know nursimha and we know nursing home but it takes some level of connectivity with krishna to connect what we see around to the divine realm i want to ask all of you a question when you see a fruit do you remember its reflection ever like for example if you see a mango fruit do you ever remember its reflection when you see the reflection of a mango fruit do you remember the mango yes yes or yes yes <laughs> that world is the actual fruit this world is the reflection when you see the fruit you don't remember the reflection what does that mean when you see krishna you should forget material existence yet at the same time when you see the reflection you should remember the fruit that means whatever you see in this world which is the reflection of that world it should only remind us of krishna our acharyas have been like this mukunda the very famous devotee of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu who was serving as a physician in shri khanda a place about 4 miles west of katwa where mahaprabhu took sanyas Mukunda was a doctor and think about this fascinating story the king calls him because Mukunda was a physician and the king was ill Mukunda climbs up the ladder climbs up the stairs and goes to that you know you've seen in olden times there used to be kings who who would have their throne like the vikramaditya style they would have stairs after stairs after stair and up on the pedestal there sits the emperor right so the king was sitting there on the throne and here was mukunda climbing up the stairs going up to the king to check what was wrong with the king the king was running temperature and mukunda was checking the body temperature and at that time the servant next to the king was fanning the king with a peacock feather fan think about it and mukunda a pure devotee of krishna who's an incarnation of vrinda devi actually according to gaur ganadesh deepika he looks at the king and looks to the side the servant fanning the king with a peacock feather fan seeing the peacock feather fan 
Mukunda remembers the Lord who wears a peacock feather on his head. And remembering Shamasunda, remembering Krishna, Shiki Picha Mole. Leela Swayam Vara Rasam Labhate Jayashri. Bilba Mangal Thakur writes. Chintamani Jayati Soma Girir Gurur Me. Siksha Gurushcha Bhagavan Shiki Picha Mole. Bilba Mangal Thakur in the start of the book. He says, I bow down to that Lord who wears a crown of peacock feathers on his head. Actually, Shukdev Goswami, he says, Barha Pidam. And it's interesting, the word Barha means a peacock, doesn't mean peacock feather. And Apidam means crown. It means Krishna has a crown of peacock, not peacock feather. What does that mean? He wears so many peacock feathers on his head, it seems as if a peacock is sitting on his head. So when Mukunda saw this peacock feather fan, he remembered Krishna who wears a crown of peacock feathers. And remembering Krishna and feeling separation, tumbling down the stairs came Mukunda. Intoxicated in devotion, he fell unconscious, frothing from his mouth, remembering Krishna. Now the king thought, doctor, heal thyself first. He came in to treat me, what happened? The king came down as a doctor now to check if the... Dr. Mukunda was okay. And Mukunda who was foaming and frothing in devotion, feeling separation and love from Krishna just by looking at a peacock feather fan. Now he had to hide it. He can't tell the king, you know, I'm such a great devotee. <laughs> just by looking at the peacock feather fan, I remembered Krishna, you know. <laughs> he couldn't say because the nature of devotion is humility. You try to hide what you have, right? If you're a multi-millionaire and you walk like a multi-millionaire, you will be robbed. <laughs> if you're a multi-millionaire and you walk like a multi-millionaire, you'll be robbed. But let's say if you have a million dollars, but you walk like a farmer in a local train in India, you take all your cash and tie it up a gunny sack bag and you go with torn clothes in a local train, nobody will rob you. <laughs> this is the nature of pure Vaishnavas. They have a million dollars, a billion dollars, a trillion dollars in the form of Krishna Prem, but they always walk like farmers in humility. So they are never robbed. They are protective of their wealth. But people like us, me I would say, if we have a briefcase of uh, a few hundred dollar bills, let's say, just a few, and many one dollar, <laughs> what we would do? We would keep all the one dollar under, and on the top it's all hundred dollar. On each of the top of the stack is hundred dollar, hundred dollar, hundred dollar. But inside it's all one dollar. So the person who's opening the briefcase will think, oh, he's quite rich. That's what conditioned souls do. They have some inclination and they act as if they're very special. Mukunda, because of his humility, when the king asked him what happened, Mukunda said, I, you know, I'm a patient of epilepsy. I get the seizure fits quite often, and this is just one of the instance. And the king said, don't try to trick me. I worship Allah. I know that this is a symptom of separation from God. And Mukunda didn't say anything. <laughs> a simple peacock feather fan reminded him of Krishna. What are some examples we have given till now of the principle of seeing Krishna in all directions? We gave an example of Prabhupada. What was it? Chicago. Chicago. What else did we speak about? Parameter. What else? Gap. That's right. Then? Nursing home. Listerine. What else? Tinted glass. Yes. What else? CC and BCC, of course. Yes. Already covered. Anything else? Peacock fan. Thank you. So keep in track of all the examples. Okay, we're going to do this again. <laughs> Madhavendra Puri, another classic example. He would just look at the rain cloud. Freshly formed, fresh monsoon rain clouds and Madhavendra Puri would cry, Ha Krishna, Ha Krishna. The complexion of the rain cloud would remind him of Krishna. What to speak of the love of Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu? What can we say about what Mahaprabhu felt? Mahaprabhu would see trees 
and he would embrace the trees and he would sing brindavanam sakhi bhuvo vitanoti kirtim yad devaki sutapadam bujalabdha lakshmi govinda venu manu matta mayur nrityam prekshadri sanvavaratanya samasta sattvam ha trees of brindavan when or when will i have this love that you have for krishna any tree mahaprabhu would see he would be convinced he is in brindavan and these are trees of brindavan when he would see trees move he would think ha ah, these trees are dancing in ecstasy when he would see flowers in the trees he would say look the hair on the body of the trees are standing on end and when he would see fruits in the trees he would say look the fruits represent their devotional mood which is completely ripened and when he would see the trees bend by the weight of those fruits mahaprabhu would say look these trees are offering obeisances in the direction of krishna amazing be in this world but not of this world padma patram ivam bhasa like the lotus flower stays in the muddy pool but is untouched by the mud chaitanya mahaprabhu would see any water body any water body and he would sing chidananda bhano sadananda suno para prema patri drava brahma gatri aganam lavitri jagat kshema datri pavitri kriyam no vapur mitra putri ah daughter of the sun god in the form of yamuna you have appeared here and not just that he would jump and bathe and swim in that water convinced that it is yamuna now you may have doubts whether does he know the difference between pond river he is nimai pandit he could break down the pride of keshav kashmiri keshav kashmiri chanted 100 verses in 1 hour at the speed of the wind glorifying ganga on the spot he composed verses and mahaprabhu he was just listening and then keshav kashmiri said at the end of 100 verses glorifying the ganga he looked at nimai pandit and he said <laughs> what do you say to that Mahaprabhu said um, very good do you want me to first start with the flaws or with the good points He said flaws <laughs> faults kid grow up what kind of faults there are no faults in my poetry Mahaprabhu said okay uh, how about the 66th verse that you chanted Now even Keshav Kashmiri was thinking I chanted the verses at the speed of the wind I myself don't know what was the 66th verse Mahaprabhu said Oh it started with mahatvam gangaya satatam idam abhati nitaram can you chant that verse mahaprabhu heard 100 verses on the spot and remembered the order and picked the 66th verse and even reminded keshav kashmiri of the first line just by hearing and then when keshav kashmiri sang that verse mahaprabhu ripped it to pieces that will be the topic of the next trip discussion so i'm not going to get there <laughs> but just to give the direction Mahaprabhu ripped syllable after syllable of that verse and then when Keshav Kashmiri was completely pounded and pulverized he looked at Nimai Pandit Nimai Pandit said there are actually unlimited flaws in your verse you can take more than 5 so i'll just stop there that Nimai Pandit who could defeat Keshav Kashmiri could defeat sarvabhauma bhattacharya defeated prakashananda saraswati and 60000 sanyasis how can he be confused between what is yamuna and what is not it is the blinding of love he was intoxicated and blinded by love not just that chaitanya mahaprabhu while being in jagannath puri sharad jyotsna sindhur Let's do this again. Sharad Jyotsna Sindhu. Sharad Jyotsna Sindhu. Avakalanaya. Avakalanaya. Jat Yamuna. Jat Yamuna. Brahma Dhavan Yosmin. Brahma Dhavan Yosmin. Hari Virahata Par. Hari Virahata Par. Nava Eva. Nava Eva. Nimagna Murchala. Nimagna Murchala. Payasi Nivasan. रात्रि मखिला रात्रि मखिला 
प्रभात प्राप्त स्वयं अवतु सशची सुनुरिहन कविराज गोस्वामी पाठ से इन जगन्नाथ पुरी चैतन्य महाप्रभु इन दी अंत्य लीला वन नाइट जंप्ड इनटू दी ओशन ओशन व्हाई शरद ज्योतिष्णा सिंधुर इट वाज द नाइट ऑफ शरद पूर्णिमा and we know from krishna leela on the night of sharad purnima on the banks of jamuna krishna performed sweet singing and dancing with shrimati radharani and other gopis chaitanya mahaprabhu on the night of sharad purnima the first day of kartik looked at the ocean and he was convinced that this is the jamuna and not just that he saw the past times of radha and krishna there and he broke through three doors that govinda had locked him within they were all locked but mahaprabhu slid from the space between the end of the door and the ground how he did that please don't ask me he squeezed himself between the doors and came out and ran to the ocean and jumped into the ocean and guess what all night he was swimming in the ocean under water searching out for radha and krishna in the morning he was rescued by swarup damodar goswami and he said mahaprabhu what were you doing in the ocean mahaprabhu opened his eyes and he said swarup damodar why did you bring me back bring you back you were in the ocean under water he said i was in the ocean of bliss i was in the jamuna i saw the past times of radha and krishna i was serving them by offering fruits and that's when you dragged me out and got me here what am i going to do in this world can you imagine this level of vision of krishna being in jagannath puri and convinced that this is brindavan jumping into an ocean and convinced that it is the jamuna this is the level of love that chaitanya mahaprabhu had anything he would look he would just look at a little sand dune he would look at chatak parvat he would just look at a little spot with some sand on top and what would he think of god Yeah, not just that. He would start singing. Please, everyone. Hanta ya madri rabala. Hanta ya madri rabala. Hari das variyo. Hari das variyo. Ye dram Krishna charana. Ye dram Krishna charana. Sparsha pramoda. Sparsha pramoda. Manam tano ti sahago. वसकंधर वसकंधर कंद मूले कंद मूले एनी सैंड ड्यून एनी स्मॉल हिल एनी सेट ऑफ रॉक्स एंड महाप्रभु वुड रन थिंकिंग दैट दिस इज गोवर्धन हा गिरिराज एनी वाटर बॉडी हा जमुना एनी फॉरेस्ट हा वृंदावन एनी ट्री हा कल्पवृक्ष ट्रीज एंड एनी ह्यूमन लुकिंग एट कृष्णा इन देयर हार्ट When or when will this vision come in our life? Krishna is present in the heart of every living entity around us, and we still neglect Krishna's presence and fight with that person. Alas, durda eva midrisham iha jani na nuraga. No vision, absolutely. It is described. <clears throat> Shrimati Radha Rani, highest level of love for Krishna. anything around which is black in complexion would remind her of krishna anything black like her hair her hair just looking into the mirror at her locks of soft black curly hair radharani would think of krishna the kajal of her eyes would remind her of krishna the mascara on the eyes the musk black chin dot would remind her of krishna black bumblebee would remind her of krishna blue sari would remind her of krishna when she would wear bluish black sapphire touchstone necklaces and blue sapphire bangles she would get reminded of krishna what are some things that reminds her of krishna one hair kajal 
black chin musk dart, blue sari, bumblebee, necklace, bangles. Another thing that reminds Radharani of Krishna is a gopi by the name Shamala. Because her name is Shamala, it has the name Sham, and Sham means dark complexion Krishna. Just by looking at Shamala Gopi, Radharani would faint. <laughs> and Lalita and Vishaka would think, oh, did she see Krishna? And the answer is no. Did she smell the fragrance of Krishna? The answer is no. She just happened to see a gopi who had a name called Shamala, which had the name Sham, which represents dark, which represents the complexion of Krishna. What level of connectivity is this? Deeper than any network connection. <laughs> Strongest connection. Not just that, the dark tamal trees of Brindavan remind her of Krishna. Because they have the same color of Krishna, they have the same fragrance as the body of Krishna. Not just that, the blue, dark blue lotus flowers in the Jamuna, night blooming, intoxicating, fragrance filled, bluish black lotus, soft petaled lotus flower in the Jamuna reminds her of Krishna. The night sky reminds her of Krishna. The dark fortnight. You know the moon goes from waxing and waning, dark fortnight, bright fortnight. The moon goes from full moon to no moon and no moon to? So no moon to full moon is called Shukla Paksha. It's the bright fortnight because it seems like the moon is increasing its effulgence. Not at that time. But when the moon goes from full moon to no moon, it seems like it's getting darker and darker and darker and darker and darker. Therefore that fortnight is called? Krishna Paksha. But Krishna Paksha has one more meaning. Paksha means on the side. Swa Paksha, V Paksha. My side, opposite side. Yeah? Paksha means the side that you take. So Krishna Paksha means to be on the side of Krishna. Just by seeing that it is the dark fortnight and it's getting darker and darker and it's called Krishna Paksha which also means to be on the side of Krishna. Radharani would faint. Hare Krishna. Unbelievable. Of all the seasons, Radharani loves the winter the most. Because the nights are longest. There's maximum darkness. Because, well, I lived in Boston for quite some time. It used to be sunset at 2.30 in the afternoon. Winter time with snow all over. And then I went to Minnesota. Then I somehow meet some friend of mine who's from Arizona and he just comes to me and starts describing the good weather that he's enjoying. And another friend from the West Coast, he says, well, California is so beautiful. Then another friend who comes from Florida and says, I'm coming from the beach. And I'm like, yeah, right. And I'm from Minnesota. I'm enjoying the snow here. 2.33 o'clock in Boston. I remember coming off the university and I'm looking at my, and new to America. Coming straight from Mumbai. <laughs> where our winter. <laughs> winter in Mumbai. Winter in Mumbai was like the summer in Minnesota. <laughs> and coming to Boston. Where the sun sets at 2.30, 3 o'clock, 3.30 maximum in the afternoon. And the sun would rise at like at 7.30, 7.45 in the morning. So it's long, 10, 12, 15 hours of darkness. Radharani loves long winter nights because it's dark and it reminds her of Krishna. What else reminds Radharani of Krishna? The dark waters of the Jamuna. By the way, Yamuna has one more name and that's Krishna. Because she's dark in complexion. So when sometimes some Sakhis tell Radharani, instead of using the word Yamuna, they may sometimes say Kalindi, which is fine. But sometimes they may say Krishna. And when Radharani hears that, the word Krishna goes straight into her heart and she falls unconscious. Not just that, Radharani also gets reminded of Krishna by seeing a male deer. Because in Sanskrit, a male deer is called Krishna Sar. What is it called? Krishna. It's a golden deer with 
black spots. So it's in Sanskrit just called Krishna Sar. And because it has the name Krishna, it reminds Radharani of Krishna. So what are some things that remind Radharani of Krishna is the trivia question. One after another. Hair. Kajal. Musk dot. Sari. Bumblebee. Bangles. Necklace. Dark sky. My request is please don't make this the Indian parliament. <laughs> yes, Yamuna, thank you. Winter nights. Shamala Sakhi. Lohi Bazaar. Lotus flower, okay, I'll take that. Krishna Sar, the deer. Tamal trees. Krishna Paksha. The black bumblebee, Krishna Bringa. What else? Winter nights, Yamuna. That's it. This is how much Radharani remembers Krishna by things directly, just being dark, not connected to Krishna, just by looking at things. Now it's described when Radharani gets angry. She doesn't want to see anything black. <laughs> because in her anger, anything black reminds her of Krishna. Think about the love, that, the, the extent of devotional vision. If someone in anger remembers Krishna with anything that's dark, what to speak of when Radharani is joyful. And now when she is angry, she doesn't want to see anything dark and she changes everything around. What does she do? She doesn't meet Shamala Sakhi. <laughs> she doesn't go to the Yamuna. She doesn't put the musk dot. Instead, she just puts a chandan, a sandalwood dot. She's without her mascara or her kajal. She changes her blue sari to a red sari. <laughs> Enough hint for Krishna to know. Now you will say, what about the bangles and the necklace? She changes her blue sapphire necklace to a pearl necklace. She changes her blue sapphire bangles to ivory bangles made out of ivory. Now you will say, what about? Yeah. It's described when Radharani looks at a mirror and it reflects her hair. She takes a stone and breaks the mirror. Now what happens? The mirror breaks into a thousand pieces. And in each of those pieces, she sees the black hair. <laughs> and before she was reminded of one Krishna. And now by the stone throw and the break of the mirror, the thousand parts that are formed in the mirror, each of that part reflects the blackness of Radharani's hair. And each of that black reflection reminds her of Krishna. So she wanted to get rid of one Krishna and Krishna expanded into a thousand forms and says, you like me, you hate me, you can't ignore me. <laughs> What does she do when she sees the cloud, which is dark in complexion? It's described she opens up her umbrella because she wants to block the vision of the cloud by staying under the umbrella. What about the tamal trees? She tells her sakis to whitewash the tamal trees in Brindavan. Hare Krishna, think your service is difficult? Now this is actual service. <laughs> Radharani tells the sakis, go and whitewash all the tamal trees in Braj. And they are like, okay. They find it easier to convince Krishna with a plan to somehow pacify Srimanthi Radharani. That's easier than whitewashing the tamal trees. What else does she do? When it's night time and it's winter time, she closes her eyes because she doesn't want to see the darkness. But guess what? When she closes her eyes, it's still dark. The best part is when you don't have to water down the philosophy and you still have a discussion and kids are laughing the loudest. There's nothing more happier than that. <laughs> this is the vision of Srimati Radharani. This is the vision of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is the vision of Madhavendra Puri, just looking at a rain cloud. This is the vision of Mukunda, just looking at a peacock feather fan. 
And it's not just in our sampradaya. This is just the nature of devotion. In Sri Sampradaya, there was a very great Acharya by the name Sripad Vedanta Desikar. How many of us have heard of Sripad Vedanta Desikar? Very great Vaishnava Acharya in the line of Sripad Ramanuja Acharya. Guess what he says? Who is his Ishtadev? Narayana. Now look what he says. Ready everyone? Yes, now this is going to be the final, absolutely the final run in our marathon. Fasten your seat belts. This is going to be fascinating. Vedanta Desikar at his best. <laughs> Vedanta Desikar says, O Mahavishnu, your crown is as effulgent as millions and millions of suns. Your crown is? <laughs> While your face is more effulgent than millions and millions of moons. <laughs> You don't have to repeat every <laughs> sentence. <laughs> you can sometimes repeat. <laughs> he says, my lord. <laughs> he says, my, my lord. You, uh, yeah. <laughs> Your crown is as effulgent as millions and millions of suns and your face is as effulgent as millions and millions of moons. Oh, Narayana, when I see locks of soft black curly hair cascaded up to your shoulder, I get reminded of the dark night. And then, your chest is like the ground and the waterfall of beauty from your crown up to your chest is like a beautiful waterfall of nectar from the topmost mountain up to the ground. Unbelievable. Vedanta Desikar compares the crown to? Face to? Hair to? Compared the hair to? Dark nights. And then there is a waterfall. What is that? The waterfall of beauty and nectar and sweetness from the crown up to the? Up to the chest. Now he says, my Lord, you're so beautiful. You're so beautiful that this waterfall is gushing down your chest. And as it is gushing down your chest, it is stopped by two banks in the form of your waist. Your waist are like the two banks supporting this waterfall of nectar. But then he says, because it is stopped by the two banks... There is a whirlpool that is formed, and that's your belly. He compares the crown to? Face to? Hair? The waterfall of? Which is controlled by the two banks? The waist or the hips? And the whirlpool? The belly or the navel? Then he says, my lord, your thighs are like the trunks of the desire-fulfilling trees of Vaikuntha. Why? Because anyone who sits on your thighs, it fulfills all their desires. Pralat sat on your lap, his desires were fulfilled. Dhruva sat on your lap, his desires were fulfilled. Lakshmi sits on your lap, her desires are fulfilled. My Lord, your thighs are like the trunks of the desire-fulfilling trees of Vaikuntha. Mahavishnu is like, Ani or. <laughs> then Vedanta Desikar says, My Lord, your lotus feet are like oceans of honey. Lotus feet are compared to? Oceans of honey. Oceans of honey. And then he says, Your toenails can eclipse the radiance, the luminance of the moons. The feet are compared to the ocean of nectar or honey. And your toenails are compared to the radiance of the moon. But what happens to an ocean by the gravitational pull of the moon? There are tides. He says those are the lines that are formed on the sole of your feet. They are the up-raising high tides in the ocean of honey attracted to the moonbeams of your toenails. Hare Krishna. And only when you thought it's over, it's beginning. <laughs> Vedanta Desikar says... From that whirlpool navel comes a lotus flower. 
And in the middle of that lotus flower is Brahma, the creator of this whole creation. How astonishing are you? But then he says, that Brahma in that lotus flower, he has some respiratory problem. <laughs> now you'll know in a minute why. He says, because my Lord, on one side, you hold a conch shell. And on one side, you hold a, a disc, a chakra. And he says, the lotus gets confused. Because the conch shell is like the moon. And the disc is as effulgent as the sun. And the lotus opens at the sun. And closes looking at the moon. And close, opens looking at the sun. And closes looking at the moon. And opens looking at the sun. And closes looking at the moon. And there inside that lotus is Brahma. <laughs> the lotus looks at the sun like disc and opens. And Brahma goes. <sighs> and then the lotus closes looking at the conch shell. Thinking that it's the moon. The lotus closes and that's when Brahma goes. <sighs> and then. <sighs> Vedanta Desikar says the breathing of Brahma is because of the lotus opening and closing, looking at the sun-like radiant Sudarshan Chakra and moon-like radiant Kangsha. Then he says, Lakshmi resides in the form of a golden hair on your chest. And to protect that Lakshmi, you have kept two more in the form of a club and a lotus flower. So my Lord, to protect you, you have two. Jai and Vijay. But to protect Lakshmi who's there in your chest, you have four messengers. Shanka Chakra Gada Padma. He said, my Lord, when I walk in this world and I see the sun, I remember the dazzling effulgence of your helmet, your crown. When I walk in this world and I see the brilliant, soothing, rejuvenating moonbeams of the moon, I remember the soothing, rejuvenating feeling of your face. When I see the dark sky, my Lord, in this world, I remember the locks of soft black curly hair. My Lord, when I see waterfalls, I see the waterfall of your beauty. When I see whirlpools, I see your navel. When I see lotuses, I remember your palm. I remember your feet. When I see trunks of trees, I remember your thighs. When I see oceans of honey, which doesn't exist, but oceans in general, I remember your lotus feet. Also, my Lord, when I see high tides, I remember the lines at the sole of your feet. My Lord, in which direction should I point that I can say you don't exist? You have completely, transcendently smothered my existence. Vedanta Desikar prays. So it's quite fascinating. He can see Vishnu in all directions. Ma Mahaprabhu can see Krishna in all directions. If you ask Hanuman, he can see Ramchandra in all directions. Why? Sthavar jangama dekhe Dekhe tara murti Sarvatra ho nija Sarvatra ho Ishta Deva Spurti Sthavara Jangama Dekhe Na Dekhe Tara Murti Sthavara Jangama Dekhe Na Dekhe Tara Murti Sarvatra Hoi Nija Ishta Deva Surti So Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrit by all the examples that we see in Vaishnav life of Acharyas we see that where there is love there's a request to come ahead Prabhuji wants us to make progress on the path of bhakti <laughs> and not be stagnant. We see the essence of all advice is to see Krishna in all circumstances. Absolutely in all circumstances. Srila Prabhupada gives a brilliant example in the purport. Srila Prabhupada says, when a daughter comes home and she sees the shoes of her father, and she sees the briefcase of her father. She sees the tie of her father. Whom does the daughter remember? The mother? Father. father. That's right. 
The daughter, when she sees the shoes of the father, the bag of the father, the tie of the father, she knows the father's come back from work. But the neighbor's child, by seeing these shoes and the briefcase and the tie, will not be able to remember the previous father. Right? Because there is no connection, there's no relation. At the moment, we live in this world like the neighbor's child. We are seeing things around, but we don't see them in connection to Krishna. But when there is devotional sentiments, like the daughter whose father has left the shoes and the bag and the tie, when we see the sun rising and setting, we see the environment around, we will see them in connection to our Supreme Father. And it will invoke remembrance of Krishna. That's the perfection of bhakti. It's not to blame, complain and criticize. It is at every moment to be connected with Krishna. Griheva bane te take, ha gauranga bole dake, narotama mage taro sanga. Narotam Das Thakur says, if someone at home or outside can remember Krishna constantly and call out to his name, Gauranga! Gauranga! Nityananda! Nityananda! While being in this world, seeing things around, if we can change our vision, we will make advancement. It's not about changing circumstances around. It is changing our, con our consciousness or our vision towards those circumstances. At all times to remember Krishna. Absolutely at all times. Whatever may be the circumstance. Prahlad Maharaj, and this will be the conclusion of our discussion. Prahlad Maharaj, he gave a series of instructions to his friends. And the last instruction Prahlad Maharaj gave was, oh dear friends, develop the vision to see Krishna everywhere. Now Krishna thought, let me test the preacher for his own preaching. Sometimes, you know, it's very easy to sit here and just give some class. But then when you get off the Vyasasana, then Krishna tries testing us on what we preached. And only those who are realized will succeed. Prahlad Maharaj preached to his friends. The essence of all advice, dear friends, is develop the vision to see Krishna in all circumstances. And then when he was tested, what was the test? The test was Hiranyakashipu asking Prahlad, where is your Vishnu? Now if Prahlad Maharaj wasn't realized, he would say, well, I don't know. The Shastra says he's everywhere. <laughs> Prahlad said, he's everywhere. Hiranyakashipu said, what about this pillar? He knew about this pillar because Hiranyakashipu had himself made that pillar with his own hands. It was the pillar in his own courtroom, in his own royal assembly. So he said, ha, Krishna's everywhere. What about this pillar? Prahlad looked at the pillar. And inside he saw Nishingadev warming up. <laughs> Stretching himself in the pillar. Prahlad looks at Nashingadev and Nashingadev winks at him and said, ready. <laughs> Prahlad is in ecstasy. Hiranyakashipu said, ah, look, you're not able to find Vishnu there. Is he there? Prahlad Maharaj said, yeah, <laughs> he is there. And there goes Hiranyakashipu. <laughs> Slams the pillar. Garjantam garjayantam bujabadan. Garjantam garjayantam nijabajaputalam. Gotayantam hatantam rupyantam tapayantam. Divibuviditijam krepayantam kripantam. Krandantam roshayantam. Dishidishisatatam samharantam bharantam. Vikshantam purnayantam karanikara. Shadair divya simham namami. Nashinga appeared. Bhukhandam baranandam paravara viratam dampa dhamporu dampam dim 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 
सत्यम विधातुम निज भृत्य भाषितम व्याप्तिम च भूतेशु अखिलेशु चात्मन अदृश्य तत्याद्भुत रूप मुद्वहन स्तंभे सभायाम न मृगम न मानुषम ही अपियर्स देर एंड हियर इज हिरण्य कशिपू लुकिंग हु इज दिस अन इनवाइटेड गेस्ट हाउ लॉन्ग एज ही बीन लिविंग इन द पिलर इन माई रॉयल असेंबली एंड देयर गोज प्रहलाद What is fascinating is when the Lord appeared, Hiranyakashipu still did not have the vision to recognize Him. Just like the Lord appears in front of us in the form of the deity, in the form of Sri Mad Bhagavatam, in the form of Sri Guru, in the form of the Holy Name, in the form of the Dham, and like Hiranyakashipu, we don't have the vision to recognize Him. And Prahlad, on the other hand, he had the vision to see Krishna even in a pillar. In one assembly, I was doing this katha, and I said the pillar cracked. There was one devotee sitting next to the pillar in the class. <laughs> he kind of moved. I said, "Not the pillar here, but the pillar in Hiranyakashipu's courtroom." <laughs> Now, who considers a pillar worshipable? Nobody. But when Pralad has the vision of bhakti, he can see the Lord even in something that is not worshipable, like a pillar. and when there is no vision even when the lord appears hiranyakashipu is wondering what species is this who is this where is his face where is his feet such huma- magnanimously humongously large huge form of nishingadev hiranyakashipu looks like a mosquito still trying to figure out when there is no vision even when the lord appears you can see him how shishupal did not recognize Ravana did not recognize, and on the other hand, when there is vision, you can see sit in Brindavan, and the Lord could be in Dwaraka, and still tears, rivers of tears are being shed in Brindavan in vision and separation of Krishna. So, while being in this world, dear devotees, the essence of the talk is, while being as grihasthas, while doing our duties, by taking care of everything that we are taking care, moment to moment. let's make an endeavor to remember krishna the call for action at the end of this talk now you will say at the end of it what are we supposed to do what's the practical thing to do the practical thing to do here's the call for action each one of us present here has to promise to radha madan mohan to maintain a small book and small diary with us and at the end of the day write three things that happened to you that day where you could see krishna's hand like for example you went somewhere and you were hungry and you kind of let's say kind of shy to tell them that you just visited someone and you felt hungry but they still asked you you know we've made uh, jalebis and what else <laughs> what do you like rasgulla what else gulab jamun he's very detached <laughs> this gap prabhu is very detached <laughs> when the person comes and asks us this is what we have made would you like to take something we can make an entry in our notebook krishna you're so kind i did not ask that person but you inspired that person to ask me i thank that person for being a medium but krishna i thank you for taking care of me moment to moment we thank people who do good to us but we are grateful to krishna ultimately for taking care of us and others we are grateful for being mediums of krishna in our life so the call for action is at the end of our day each one of us every single day will make an entry into the notebook three things what are those three things what are we going to make an entry of three things in that day which reminded us of krishna it could be circumstances it could be persons it could be anything any event it could be any interaction like for example it's possible that two brothers may have worn um let's say blue kurta and yellow kurta for example and as soon as you saw those two brothers you may remember oh well they remind me of krishna balaram because their kurta color reminds me of the dress of krishna and balaram it could be as simple as that don't feel shy don't feel embarrassed as simple as that make an entry and you will see the mind starts thinking like that and in every circumstance you will see krishna's hand 
One last point before we wrap up. When His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj during the COVID pandemic gave Diksha, gave initiation, I was watching it live. And the devotee, I'm not sure if the devotee is here at this point. The devotee was taking vows with the mask on. And Maharaj said, you can take your mask off. And then Maharaj paused and he said, initiation means unmasking. It happened in ISV. Now you tell me, what level of connection, seeing a COVID mask and unmasking and connecting that to the unmasking of the hypocrisy that a disciple has to surrender to the guru with no coverings. We can't imitate, but our small attempt would be day to day, we can, we can try. Just like page by page, Page, page by page? Be a sage. Ah, be a sage, page by page. So be a sage, page by page. Before you age, escape the cage. <laughs> Go to Premanande! Thank you very much. force of love, I don't want it to interrupt and stop. However, it's an honor and a privilege to have our dear Amirendra Prabhu at ISV. And those who could join us a little later, as you know, he's a disciple of His Holiness Radha Govinda Maharaj. And this is a beautiful gift of Maharaj to us, that he's present at ISV. As you know, Maharaj has been a scholarly and very, very deep knowledge of Srimad Bhagavatam, letter by letter. And you can see that how Prabhu has really take his teachings very close to the, his heart. And we are grateful for sharing that with all of us today. If you have any questions, we can take a question for five minutes, and then we'll go into his ecstatic kirtan. And he will take us into the arti, and we will remember to break the ground, okay? So, any questions or reflections? Govinda Madhi Purushan has a question. <laughs> Giridhari's birthday today. Today is Giridhari Prabhu's birthday. Ask a question like you did today. I like if you can watch much. Oh, I thought you were asking for a birthday gift. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So like when you talk about like the different samvadas, 
if I, if you were talking about it, um, you said, if I understood correctly, the tree, um, tree samvidaya is also entrance to Vrindavan, is that correct? How about we take this question privately because there would be people who didn't attend that class, so they may not have a context of it. But we will talk about uh, the three sampradayas and your birthday party privately. <laughs> Yes, Mataji. Oh. oh, there's a mic. Okay. okay. <laughs> Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you so much for all those uh, things to see, to remember Krishna. I, I, I was remembering one of His Holiness Radha Govind Maharaj's lecture that uh, he said when um, I see any, I'm born Odia and you know, I know how to read and write Odia, but I never saw in that perspective when I heard Maharaj saying, uh, in Odisha, everything is round and round, like Lord Jagannath's eyes, wow. the letters are also round. So from that day, I remember, like, you know, how much Maharaj's, uh, you know, Krishna consciousness, thinking of Jagannath oh, in the letters. Beautiful. Thank you so yeah. much. Oh, yes, I will. <laughs> Our Prahlad Maharaj is here, yes. <laughs> um, Raj Raj's complexion reminded me of one story that uh, one time Radharani was angry and she did not want to look at Krishna and uh, she did not want to see anything black so she told her gopi, gopis you, you uh, shave your eyebrows <laughs> Krishna uh, uh, took a form of a peacock, and uh, he thought that he um, thought that Radha Rani loves to dance, mm. so he assumed the form of a peacock mm. and uh, started da uh, dancing before Radha Rani. And Radha Rani, uh, looking at the blue feather, uh, was. I think, is this a demon or Krishna? So, is this a demon or Krishna? Huh? So, uh, and Radharani... Why don't you come here? Wait, come here. <laughs> come here. <laughs> he was... Um, I'll, I'll hold. <laughs> you, you, you be free to move your hands. She... Um, loves to da love to dance, huh. so she um, assumed the form of a pea pe hen and uh, uh, danced with Krishna. And then the gopis were all shaved up. And the go gopis were all shaved up. <laughs> He's saying Radha and Krishna were dancing as peacock and pea hen, and all the gopis had shaved up because Radha did not want to see anything black. The gopis were uh, now that time shaved up. Ah. <laughs> they shaved up and moved into the temple <laughs> as brahmacharis. <laughs> Adults, please don't expect that this will be the same reciprocation. <laughs> Seeing that the child had a question now, more adults are putting their hand up. <laughs> Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank you for the really v wonderful lecture. I really liked it. Um, I just remembered when you said that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was always looking at people and seeing Krishna inside them. And I was wondering of that picture in the Bhagavad Gita showing of the devotee looking, the pure devotee looking at everyone's soul and seeing yes. the Paramatma. Beautiful. Instead of seeing, seeing like Beautiful. the Beautiful. What is your name? Arman. Arman. He has reflected so wonderfully with Vidya Vinaya Sampanne Brahmane Gavi Hastini. He has said that he has bound the essence of our discussion to that verse of Bhagavad Gita. So wonderful. Everyone.
I am scared every every time somebody puts their hand up now. There you go. Hare Krishna, I'm over here in the back. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, uh, I love thinking about life from the mood of Radharani mm. because it says in the Chaitanya Chattamurta, just as I am the abode of all mutually contradictory characteristics, so Radha's love is always full of similar contradictions. Yes. And even when she's in these moods where she will go from anger to love and she asks gopis to shave their eyebrows, we're in this space where even when we are in life and going through life, we yeah. are inflicted with our different desires that cause us strife and happiness. Yeah. And even so, like Radharani, we always come back to love. And we always come back to Godhead. Any final reflections, questions, corrections? Yes. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank you so much for your nectarian lecture. It was it was so wonderful. I could I could imagine Krishna like from your words. It was so beautiful. Um, I so you're a big very big role model for me, having like managed like both your like your student life and your and your devotional life so expertly, getting to like master's degree in master's degree in engineering. And I was wondering what uh, advice you can give to manage uh, student life and uh, and devotional life because I find that I I struggle with it and I'm either uh, yeah. How old are you? Uh, Sixteen. Sixteen. So it's a long seminar topic, actually. But uh, the question is, how do you manage? How how sh how should one balance? Or what are some things that we can say regarding balancing material, academic um, goals, responsibilities with spiritual life? For me personally, again, I can say of other things. Uh, I can just say things that worked for me. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> oftentimes what the mind does is when we are chanting it thinks of academics and when we are in studies it thinks of chanting right it flips when you're studying it reminds you that you have to chant 16 rounds and when you're chanting it reminds you but if you chant 16 rounds how are you going to study and then it takes you away from chanting and away from studies and puts you to Instagram <laughs> so the first thing that I did was to identify my distractions. I don't have an Instagram account. I, the last time I logged into Facebook was three and a half years ago. I'm not saying that is the way, but I'm just saying it worked for me. Because I see that I'm a very restless person and somehow the, the fingers go back to checking comments and uh, whatever, emails and messages. And, but once I deleted, I stayed away from it, I knew I, I can't go there. I mean, there's no point. I, I just deleted, I don't know my password, so I don't know, right? So that's step number one. Things that don't take us towards material or spiritual success, take it away. Step number one. Step number two, have people around you who are materially good, which means academically focused, or those who are spiritually good. They are very sincere in their sadhana. If there are people who are neither, they take you away from academics and they are not devotional, Respect them from a distance, but you're born to do bigger things, right? Not to entertain them. Third thing, wake up early. It's a tough thing to do. And give your time up to 8.30 in the morning for Krishna. And all day up to 6 in the evening for work, academics or work or whatever. And then at night, sandwich it again with Krishna or family. If this is maintained, we may fail many times, but at least it's better to have a goal because failing to plan is planning to fail. If we don't have a plan of action, to a to-do list. I always have a to-do list. You can ask Swastik, I have boards where like it's, whether I do it or no, that's another thing. <laughs> that's another thing, let's not talk about it. But, <laughs> but I do have to-do lists, what to get done, what is urgent, what is important, what should be done in the morning, what should be done in the evening. If you don't plan materially and spiritually, we won't be able to track our progress. So these are some points which are like seeds. Now you water that with your creativity and next time I come, give me the flowers of your report. <laughs> Hare 
Hare Krishna Prabhuji. I'm a very big fan of yours, and this is my first time seeing you. And I, I just received an email from ISV that you'll be coming here. So, as a token of gratitude, I wrote a poem for you. Is it okay if I read it out? You should ask Hansa Prabhuji. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Amarendra Prabhu, your lectures Actually, divine. Actually, Mataji. A poem on Krishna, we can take it. Oh, okay. You can read it aloud. If it's, it's about Krishna? Um, it's about me. It's about me. <laughs> so maybe what you can do is um, you can send it to me. Thank you so much. <laughs> Amarendra Prabhu will be available for you to see him after the kirtan, so you can definitely you know, express your gratitude if you like uh, later on. But let's, uh, we have a lot of devotees waiting out in the parking lot as well, and they are here with the small kids, and we should attend them because they're eagerly waiting for his kirtan and arti. So now we request all the devotees to put away your cushions in the back of the room and put your valuables, uh, you know, closer to you, and everyone can face towards the deities. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Nama Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Nama Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashatyadishatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Shri Krishna 
चैतन्य प्रभो नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गाथा श्रीवास दिगो Stop it, stop it. 
धाम की श्री गंगा माई जमुना माई की भक्त देवी तुलसी महारानी की गंधराज श्रीमद भागवतम की हरिनाम संकीर्तन महायज्ञ की रास जंडल बुक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन की समवेद भक्त वृंद की ऑल ग्लोरी स्टेज असेंबल डिवोटी ऑल ग्लोरी स्टेज असेंबल डिवोटी ऑल ग्लोरी स्टेज असेंबल डिवोटी ऑल ग्लोरी ऑल ग्लोरी ऑल ग्लोरी स्टेज सी सी गुरु एंड गोरंगा Nursing prayer, please be seated, everyone. For last nursing prayer, then we'll have after that announcement and then prasadam. So stay tuned for another five ten minutes. So. <laughs> Who is singing nursing prayer? Can we get the red mic, please? Swastika will lead us into the Nishinga Dev prayer. Namaste Narasimhaya.
such a great turnout here at Iskorn of Silicon Valley. Thank you all for joining tonight's Sunday Feast Festival here at Iskorn of Silicon Valley. We welcome you all and let's give a big round of applause to those who have joined us here. And we also like to thank all the online viewers, so let's give them a big round of applause. And we like to express our gratitude and thank His Grace Amrinda Prabhu for an ecstatic nectarian <laughs> class. <laughs> and an ecstatic Arti and Kirtan. Haribo. Haribo. We'll also like to thank uh, Swastika Mataji for uh, leading the Narshima Arti. So anyone coming here for the first time? Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Our regular first timers. <laughs> Thank you all, and if you have any questions or we, if you like to be of any assistance, please reach out to me. Yeah, okay. And, uh, you know, please reach out to us. My name is Sri Gopal Das or Hansapriya Mataji there. And Sachinder Prabhu, he would, he must be uh, in, at the pressure. Oh, he's here for change, okay. So we, please reach out to us. We would be happy to assist you in any way we can. So let's chant one Mahamantra for all the newcomers here. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So today we have uh, three Sunday Feast sponsors. So I'd like to uh, acknowledge them one by one. Uh, the first sponsor is uh, Praveen Prabhu is sponsoring on the occasion of her daughter's Radhika's birthday. So is Praveen Prabhu here? Or Radhika? Hey, Radhika is here. Okay, please come. <laughs> Happy birthday, Radhika. How old are you now? Five. Five. Okay. So what do you like here? at ISKCON of Silicon Valley. Why do you come to temple every week after week? Because I like Kirtan. Okay. And do you have a lot of friends here? <laughs> Many, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Are you all his, her friends? Yeah, okay. <laughs> and we have a small gift for you. There is a prasad. And thank you. And we'd like to thank Praveen Prabhu for sponsoring tonight's feast. Thank you. Hare Krishna. And then we have Chirak Prabhu and Prutu Mataji. They are sponsoring on the occasion of their daughters, Adya and Ira. Are they here? Chirak Prabhu and Prutu Mataji. Okay, so let's thank them in their absentia. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Shivanand Pujeri Prabhu is sponsoring um, in the occasion of remembering his father and uh, grandfather. He is requesting prayers from the devotees 
so that they get shelter at the lotus feet of Radha and uh, Radha Madan Mohan. So let's uh, pray for their protection. And if he is here, Shivanand Pujairi Prabhu. Okay, so let's thank him uh, for their sponsorship also in his absentia. Hare Krishna. <laughs> we like to um, acknowledge the cooks for today. Uh, I know Avantika is uh, not going to be here. Do we know who the cooks are? Before we go into the cooks, I would like to also acknowledge Sham Sundar Prabhu and Harita Mataji. They're sponsoring uh, for Gopi Priya's ninth birthday. Arribo! So, actually, the sponsorships are very much helpful to bring you a wonderful prasadam. And with your donation, actually, we continue to serve you better and better feast. So please, you can meet Hari Sankirtan Prabhu or Surya Kun Prabhu somewhere I saw him. You can see him, and they can help you and direct you how to sponsor the Sunday feast. I also see that Amarandra Prabhu is that flower who attracts a lot of other bees. And I see that a lot of devotees that we don't see quite often because they live far away. Welcome back, Josh. Uh, we have a lot of devotees that they have come in today. So uh, I also would like to welcome back Tarun Prabhu. Uh, Amirandra Prabhu attracted him all the way from India. So we welcome all these devotees that who have come back uh, just to hear Amirandra Prabhu. So we are, it's wonderful and blissful to see these beautiful faces. I also would like to uh, see, I see Sham, Sham Prabhu, Jagannath Prabhu, who has also come from UK. My brother-in-law and my sister-in-law, they have my sister and my brother-in-law, they have come from UK. So we welcome you as well to the ISV community. And ISV community, let's impress them so they never go back, including Raswastika and and the Pramanandra Prabhu. <laughs> And I heard from the grapevine that also that we have a Girdari Prabhu in town. Is that is that is that right, Navin Prabhu? So we oh he could not make it. Okay, we welcome him anyway. So uh, give your best wishes so he can come more often to ISV. And um, he's he's in town, so and hopefully we will be do not attract him in our glories. Will attract him to come back here. All right, okay, today's cook. Today's cook is Nilachal Mataji, and she has been accompanied by uh, my two sisters. Uh, they are, she wanted to, because in UK, they don't have a big kitchen as ours. <laughs> so I wanted, I wanted to see that, see how good we are. We are attracting souls from all over the places. So they are also in the kitchen cooking today's feast. That's why Lalita Gopinath, Bhumika, and Nilachal and Harisan Kirtan Prabhu, they are the head cooks and they've been assisted by many, many, many team members. So please do acknowledge because cooking in this heat is no easy. And ask me because I know my husband does that 24 seven. So I can tell you, it's no joke. So please every bite you take, bless them that they can continue their service in the pleasure of the devotees, Vaishnavas and Shri Prabhupada and Radha Madha Mohan. With that, I just want you to look out that we're going to have email coming out from our dear uh, Jay Madhava Prabhu and Ramesh Prabhu that ISB website has been upgraded and is it launching. And we had launched on Ram Naomi, so look out for the email. If you have any feedback or something, you can re respond back to them. And then also look out um, from Sukeshwari, those who are interested, the new members who have come here. And if you have kids that who would like to register to Sunday school, please connect with Sukeshwari. With this, I'm going to hand it back to Sri Gopal Prabhu. And if not, we'll go into the Prashadam prayers. Prashadam prayers? Prashadam, the best time. Shadi Ravitya Thank you. 
Outside, hey, oh. 